Hey there. So, this is a bit of a tutorial video, which was requested. Um, <clears throat> someone sent me a message asking to do a video clearing up the tuning on this instrument, or instruments like it. Um, the not a strum stick, as I'm idiosyncratically calling this, and any other three string diatonic, diatonically fretted instrument. Now, this instrument <clears throat> is based on open tuning, which in this case, my instrument is D, A, D, with clearly the first string being an octave below the second string, the third string, excuse me. At any rate, <coughs> um, tuning something like this is very important um, because the whole thing, well, tuning any instrument is important, but the whole thing behind this is, um, and the, the design of this kind of instrument, is so that you can play just on the top string there, and this will provide a drone underneath and everything will sound in tune. Well, <clears throat> um, as many of us who play this are less experienced musicians or non-musicians, um, tuning can be an issue. Now, I've been in music a long time, but um, the only other stringed instrument I've ever played is violin, and that was years ago, so um, I've never considered myself much of a stringed instrument player, uh, so that's what drew me to this instrument. But here's how we, here's how we tune. Uh, let me tell you something about tuning. It's harder than it looks, excuse me, it's harder than it looks, but it's based on some pretty simple principles. One easy way that I know to tune this, kind of tuning the DAD, is the Star Wars method, <laughs> which is this. I discovered it right off. It's like this. See? So I know. So I can think Star Wars and at least know I'm close. But, watch this. That sounded pretty good, didn't it? But I just moved this. I know I just moved this. Okay, maybe I didn't move it far enough. <laughs> Sounds okay, but listen. Whoa, 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 whoa. And it's alright. What causes something to sound out of tune? That's the question you have to know the answer to before you really begin tuning. What causes something to sound out of tune is that the frequencies um, of the vibration of the strings are out of sync. Sound is created through vibrations that are passed on through the air. So, start a vibration here, and it causes the air molecules between here and the microphone of the camera to vibrate at the same frequency at which this vibrated. This passes along a certain note to our ears. In fact, you can see a chart um, of what frequency corresponds with what note. And certain notes are only in tune, really technically, if they're on a certain frequency. Now, to tune something like this, you need a bass line. <clears throat> now, I'm going to teach you pretty much to tune the instrument to itself. But the best way to do that is to start with a basic note. In this case, the D would be a good place to start because it's the lowest instrument. I mean, the, the lowest note on the instrument. There's a website, and I can't think of it right now, but it's to my left, which will give you an online guitar tuner um, where they'll actually play a little WAV file recorded on a guitar where you can tune to this exact D. So that's pretty cool. Um, I can't help you on the others um, because I don't have another instrument to find out. But anyway, the smaller versions of instruments like this usually tend to be um, tuned G, D, G. So if you have one that's smaller than this, this would be um, uh, correspond to what is known as a grand in some, some uh, varieties of this type of instrument. But in a not a strum stick, this is the only size that's built by Blaine Horlocker. This is all he builds, is this size, which I prefer. Um, at any rate, so what we're going to do is get our D. 
Now, when you don't have anything to tune to, you can tune to your other players. If you're playing solo, just make sure it sounds good to you. Okay, so we start with the D. Now I want to tune the second string, which is an A. So I need an A to tune to. Magic of all happiness, I have an A right here on my D string. So the one, two, three, fourth fret is my A. And I want to play, put my finger pretty close to the fret, so I'm pretty sure to get as pure a tone as I possibly can, as good an A as I can. Now play the two strings together. Now this happens to be pretty much in tune, because I was playing just a minute ago. But here's my thing. Now, it's the important thing about these knobs, unless you're stringing the instrument, you should not be cranking these knobs. If you find yourself just really cranking, spooling and unspooling these knobs, first of all, it's bad wear on your strings, um, because they'll get stretched out and all funny. Secondly, um, that's just not going to get you where you need to go tuning. Um, these need to, you need to, when you string your instrument, get it kind of set around the right area. Now, the strings are going to expand and contract over time and things like that. Um, and these strings are about a year old. Yeah, I really probably should change them, but they're my first set of strings, and I'm just... <laughs> nothing's broken yet, but I know I should probably change them. That's the thing. Change your strings. I mean, if it's been six months or maybe even a year, you should probably change your strings, even if you um, they haven't broken yet, because they can start to sound... I think mine are doing it sometimes. I do it accidentally all the time, but I can't make them do it. They'll kind of buzz a little bit, sound a little funny. They'll go out of tune kind of more easily. Um, you'll start to see that you'll, if they're really old, you'll be playing a song, and you'll start out in tune. By the time you get back to a chord you played a couple minutes ago, it's out of tune again. That means you need new strings, desperately. So don't just count on a string breaking in order to get your new string. And really, there's a lot of tension, there's a lot of pressure going on here. Um, between uh, these um, knobs, <laughs> I said better, the tuners, between the tuners and the pins down here or whatever you have um, and the bridge, there's a lot of tension going on here. So when you're dealing in large movements, you're more likely to make something go haywire. So keep the movements small on, on your tuners here. But here's the deal. I play my A. Okay, and we can hear it's off. Now how do you know it's off? Well, they're not playing the same note. Listen not just to the note, to the tone that's made, to where I can go, hmm, and I can hum along. Listen to the vibration. And when things are out of tune, you can really hear the vibration. It's kind of like when you're a kid and you talk through a fan, and you're wah, 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 wah. Okay, listen. I hope you can hear that. Sometimes the audio quality isn't all that good on this camera, but um, you get the idea. What I want to do is get rid of that wobble, get rid of those vibrations so that everything sounds smooth. That way I know that the same frequency is coming out of both notes, so out of both um, strings. So you need to make sure you know which direction is turning it tighter and which direction is turning it looser. Tighter is higher, looser is lower. I think most people know that, but adding that in just in case. Okay? So for me, I want to turn it towards me. I've got one of these gear things on here, so I have to kind of, I have to know what I'm doing. Okay. Start out low. In fact, maybe even go a little too low. Loosen it a little bit so that you're definitely out of tune. Even if you think you're pretty much in tune, you want to check and make sure it's good to whatever string you're tuning, just dip it down a little bit. That way you can really hear that vibration. And as you tune up, Play them hard. And you'll start to hear that vibration go away. Now I can hear, and I don't know if you can hear, but I can hear that it's still kind of waving just a little bit. Okay. And as I go higher, those vibrations get faster again. As you get lower and closer to, as you get closer to the note which you need to play, those vibrations get further apart. As you get further away then, as you start to move, they get shorter, and whoa, 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 and you'll hear it just oscillate between a slower and a faster. Okay. And do it again. That's what I want right there. 
when it's smooth. And sometimes you'll play and you'll even hear a That's why it's good to really listen. And I even sometimes will put my ear. It's hard to do and not hit the string, but put my ear right by the sound box. Because if you're playing in a room if you're playing in a room with a fan, turn the fan off. It will kill your ability to tell if your instrument's in tune. And if you've been tuning a really long time and just everything sounds out of tune, take a break. Stop for a minute, let your ears rest, because what's happening is you're just you're just bombarding your ears and everything's gonna sound out of tune whether it's in tune or not. So um, other sounds I wanna get away from me. I wanna just listen to my instrument. And these are playing the same octave, they're playing the same note, so it should sound like one string playing one note. So I've got my D and my A. As I play them together again, that should sound good. Sounds sweet like a good good chord should. And then I can go now we know that's out of tune because I said it out of tune a minute ago. Okay, we'll do the same thing. I actually think it's a little, actually think it's a little sharp. I'm going to drop it down. For some reason, it seems kind of easier to start low and come up rather than to start high and go down. Perhaps that's because our ears can detect higher frequencies more quickly than they can detect lower frequencies. So as we hear the lower frequency, the higher frequency will take dominance as we bring it up. So that means you're really attuned. That's my guess. I don't really know for sure why that works. What am I doing? Oh wait, <laughs> that's why I didn't take my own right step. You gotta play your D on your middle string, which is the third fret. Same thing, just slow and smooth. See how I'm doing this? I'm not, I'm not cranking real hard. Just a little bit. I'm only moving it probably 45 degrees at the most. And that's only because I tuned it down a little bit. Yep. Almost feel like I fit here a little bit of whoa whoa in it. Try to crank it just a little bit. And it's small moves, it's just small moves. Now I can play all three strings. They should sound like they're playing the same note. If I hear any waving or hear anybody out of tune here. pretty good. Now I can do the same thing with my A. I can play the A on my bottom string and my top string. I use my thumb and middle finger. And make sure that's in tune. <laughs> I play that at the beginning of my videos. Um, I'll play like that and see if things sound in tune. I'm just doing the first four frets on my top string, bottom string, same thing. It should all sound good. This is my really detailed version of tuning, which is good. I mean, you should tune in detail. You should tune carefully. And then my middle string. should all sound pleasant, should all sound good. And when you play the same note, you should hear no extraneous vibrations. So, but play because this fret, in my experience, this fret here, the second fret and the fourth fret will have the tendency most often to sound bad when you play, to, to, to tell you that your string's a little out of tune. Some of these other frets, it may just be that the string's close enough that it sounds okay, but these ones will really show up. Especially your fourth fret because you're playing the same same note and there's nothing more out of tune than two notes competing for the same frequency. Okay, so now you're in tune and you can play. And if you have any questions or thoughts or hints or comments, leave them and uh, that's that.